The first day we were here, we came down to inspect the inside of the cylinders and we saw that nasty, nasty bore scoring on cylinder six. Today, the engine uh, crankcase halves are pulled apart, the engine block. The cylinders have all been overboard. Uh, the flanges have been cut down to accept the sleeves. They've gone into an oven. Then, you, as you saw, they just Mike just drops the sleeve right in. Now it's cooling off. Uh, the next step in the procedure is going to be to deck the block with, with this machine over here, then do a final bore to fit the piston, right. and then a honing uh, on that machine over there. And then the crankcase will be done and finished. Then he'll assemble the lower end. Meanwhile, we should go check on Cisco and see how he's doing right. with the cylinder yeah, head. Cylinder. So Cisco has the cylinder heads off of our Carrera 4S. And tell us about these cylinder heads, Cisco. What do so, we got? So far, what we've done is uh, we pressure tested the cylinder heads to make sure there's no cracks. Um, we pump in about anywhere between 45 to 55 PSI into the cylinder heads just to ensure that's a lot of pressure. In the, in, in in the, the coolant cylinder. jackets? In the cooling jackets, yeah. So, it's basically like when you go check to see if a tire has a flat and they dunk it in the water. So okay. I pressurize the cylinder heads through the cooling system and then we dunk them in the water. If there's any cracks or any faults within eight PSI, you're gonna see it. Okay. Because, but we go way and above beyond that. 50, just, to, just to make sure. Just, so, so, so how do you plug all these coolant jackets off? So what we have is we have, basically it's kind of like installing a gasket. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's these plates that are made specifically for this and they have a rubber seal. And so we, we set them on the machine the way it is right now, you know, and then we, we'll put the plate on top. The plate gets bolted down. Okay. And then we, we pick one hole where we can pump air through. Okay. Can, you, can you show us the plate that you used? Yeah. So he's removed all the valves. So if we look at the, so this is the piston side that we're looking at. And then this is the camshaft side and you can see everything's removed including the valve springs and everything. So where valve springs used to be, valve springs and valves, it's totally open down here. So it's fully exposed. So this is the actual plate that we use and that's the rubber side. So then it gets set like that. Oh, cool. And then we pump the air through this hole. And so you just like clamp it on or something? Yes, it gets okay, clamped cool. on the machine. Um, awesome. And, and that's, it's very simple, very basic, awesome. very simple but it's very effective. Yeah, so then they dunk this whole thing in the water yes. and you're just looking for bubbles, air escaping. And if air is escaping, then there is a coolant jacket problem somewhere yes. in the cylinder head. Our machine rotates, so we'll, we'll see the, the, the port size, the port size, the top side, the bottom side, and the, the cylinders are exposed. Okay. It doesn't seal the cylinder, it just seals just like a gasket. So if something's cracked inside here, yes. you can still see it. If, if there's a crack from, from seat to seat, you'll see it. Can you fix it? On these, normally no. The casting, once you start trying to weld this type of casting, it's very difficult. Okay. We've tried and it's, we've had problems with them. Most of these, when we see them crack, they crack on the top side. So okay. we'll, we'll have a crack from, from where the spark plug goes towards the valve guide. Okay. That's, that's the most common cracks on these type of cylinder heads. You got a 003 right here. What does that mean? That means the cylinder head is warped three thousandths of an inch. Okay. Right, it's right in the middle. So what we do is we have a straight edge that we put on there and we get the filler gauges and we check, you know, check to see how, what's the biggest filler gauge size that goes in. Okay. In between the filler gauge and the, and the seat and the surface of the head. Okay. And so it's warped three thousandths in the middle. So yeah. like it's kind of bowed down like yeah. this. Now, uh, so three thousandths is like what? A human hair, a couple, yeah. couple or so. Three thousandths so, very little. So from this edge to this edge and in between, you have a 3,000 depression, basically. And so what, how are you gonna fix that? So once we've, once we've done all the machine work, and by all the machine work is we've already cleaned it, um, we've already either replaced the guides if needed um, and machined the valve seats, the last thing we do is we resurface the cylinder head. And so what we'll do is we'll set it on our machine, it gets clamped down, um, we make sure it's level, we make sure it's zero and zero on the end, and then we'll set the machine, it feeds into the machine, we have a single cutter that's going around and around, and it starts cutting the, the, the surface of the head till it's clean. So we're only, realistically on this cylinder head, we will remove probably anywhere between four to five thousand, 
to make to ensure that it's perfectly straight. Okay. So it's going to be perfectly straight. And so this is going to be like a zero tolerance all the way across. Yes, correct. Just like what Mike said on the on the deck side. Yes. And so if we have that zero to zero mating surface, then we've have well, then we have perfection. The cylinder heads are done. So what did you do to these, Cisco? Okay, the first thing we did right off the bat is we pressure tested the cylinder heads to make sure there's no cracks. Okay. After that, the heads were completely taken apart. We inspected everything and we found the exhaust valve guys to be wore out. So we went ahead and replaced those, got brand new ones. We uh, decarbonized the cylinder head completely. Uh, we cleaned and we measured and we refaced the intake and exhaust valves. Everything was within specs. After you install the exhaust valve guys, they will tighten up a tad bit. So that's where we have this uh, honing tool that we use has a honing stone, basically, you know, a smaller version of the other honing equipment that we have. And we'll give it the proper clearance that it's supposed to have. We have a pilot, that, a guide pilot, that's already set to the size that it's supposed to be. And that's what we use for our clearance to ensure that it's, it's where it has to be. And then after that, we reface the valve seats. Once that's done, the final machining step is to resurface the cylinder head. After and that's why it's nice and smooth yes. all the way across here. Yes. It's all shiny. Yes, it's to ensure that everything is straight. And when once you set it on the new gasket, there's no warpage, there's nothing, it's flat. Once we got all that done, it gets cleaned again. You know, we throw it in our washer. It gets, you know, it goes in our washer probably for like about five minutes or so. And then everything gets assembled at that point. You know, valves, new stem seals, and put those springs and keepers and retainers. Cool. So, so we reused all the valves. Yes. We reused all the springs. Yes. But the exhaust guides are replaced. Yes. And what's the fitment for the the stem to guide fitment? To, the tolerance. A thousand and a half. A thousand and a half. So the the the, the guide is a thousand and a half bigger. Yes. Than, to the stem of the valve. Then the stem of the valve, okay. You hone each one to fit? Each one is done individually, one at a time. Okay. Um, and like I said, we have a guide pilot that we use. That guide pilot, it's to the proper clearance it's supposed to have, you know, and we make sure there's no interference with that pilot. You know, you nice. need to have that clearance. It's very important because if not, you seize the valve. If you look down in here, uh, what Cisco's talking about, you see that brass piece down in there? There's a brass piece and then there's a steel stem sticking out. So the clearance between there is 0 0.0015 inch. So we're talking a very, very, very small amount. This machine is gonna come across here and make this completely flat, uh, each cylinder flat to the deck height and you know times three on each side. Now, is there anything that you'll do to actually check this when it's done? I'll gauge it with that, okay. uh, with that dial indicator. So basically, particularly doing a nice light cut at the end, that doesn't, you don't have any problems with it hopping or anything like that. Do you take off, like if you took three thou off that side, do you take three off this side yeah, just to make it even? about the same. Okay. You know, you're within a thou or so, it, it doesn't have to be the same exactly. There's no damage to the surface or anything. Usually there's a little distortion, particularly uh, if you don't put sleeves in it. The freestanding cylinders will tend to lean a little bit something. So you end up taking about that amount off. Three to five is about the average. Okay. So, you know, it, it takes a real minimal amount off and uh, to get a pretty decent finish. And even, uh, even when you're doing iron and aluminum, it usually comes out pretty good. When I use just the aluminum cutter on this, it, it looks like a mirror, it looks like glass. The engine on this one is already decked, the block is already decked. And when uh, he's gonna do a final bore on the cylinder, so the question becomes, uh, what is the piston to cylinder clearance inside there? They run about a thou from the factory on the, on the aluminum to aluminum. So the piston is a thousandth under? Yeah, a thousandth smaller than the bore usually. So okay. Sometimes even just a couple of tenths from the factory. I want to give them a little more clearance. Noise okay. and stuff isn't really an issue with these engines. Uh, and just to make sure that we don't have any problems. 
I'll give it another thou clearance. So they'll end up with about two on the stock pit. Now, do you have to measure the piston? No, it comes out. They, they come in really on size. So okay. Very, very consistent. The standard piston diameter uh, on this engine is 99 millimeters. So Mike is going to go to 99 millimeters plus one thousandth of an inch. And that's what this boring machine is going to bore the cylinder out to. So check this out. To summarize the boring and honing process, so you're, the, bore, the boring machine is opening it up to 99 millimeters, and then the hone is going to put the, the first 220 grit hone is going to put the cross hatches in. You're gonna put the finish on, then you're gonna to go to 280, and then you're gonna to go to the 600, the plateauing hone. Okay, and it's basically like, you know, rough, not as rough, smooth, smoothest is how it's going. So the piston can go up and down perfectly in the cylinder. Now we'll just go down to where you hear it touch. Here we go. Uh, it touches. So that cut just put a 45 degree uh, ridge all the way around the circumference of the cylinder. And that way when the piston gets pressed in there with the rings, you know, you have a ring compressor that's gonna compress the rings onto the piston. And then when he pops it through, instead of hitting that, a sharp edge against that cast iron wall, it's gonna hit that nice bevel first. The ring's gonna come down, sit onto the bevel and then it's basically going to cam with a, it's basically he just created a cam, right? And the cam's going to sure. push the ring into position and then allow it to fall into the cylinder, never to come back out again. If you feel this, you think it feels pretty smooth. Yeah. So feel it with your fingertips and I'll run your nails on it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's definitely way rougher. Right. Well, check it how it came from, from LA Sleep. Oh yeah, now way imagine, imagine if you ran the piston on a surface like that. Oh yeah. I mean, every every little time it hit one of those ridges, it's like a click. It's like, you have a lot of resistance. Oh yeah. And you it can... would end up creating a lot of wear. So with the honing process, we're gonna make it nice and smooth. You're gonna take all this torn and folded metal from the boring process and get down to what's called a base metal, which is the inside of the, of the sleeve casting. So this is machine. Now this is machined, it's machined a little better, but you want it smoother than that. Plus you're gonna install the cross hatch, which is basically, you know, lines that yeah. intersect like that, all up and down the cylinder. This still is not smooth enough. No. Even though it feels smooth, right. it's still not smooth enough. It's smoother than that, but it's still not smooth enough to support an oil film and, and the life of the rings and the piston. We've prepared the cylinders for honing. And the next video will show the honing process and on.